comedian too. Hey. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mike, thanks for asking me to do this. He asked me to do this, and so yeah, it's been awesome. This is great. I'm from Ohio. We don't have this stuff. This is <laughs> it's nice. So uh, I'm going to tell stories. Keep with the theme. Why not? Um, uh, I have no kids. I saw there was a kid here before. That's not mine. <laughs> I don't have any kids. Here's why I don't think I'm going to have kids ever. Because I have nieces and nephews. And uh, I'm from Ohio. Where's the Indians, dude? The dude at the Indians camp. That's my hometown, Cleveland. I'm sitting over there. Uh, anyways, I was in uh, Cleveland this past summer with my nephew. He's four. And uh, I took him to the swimming pool. And we play a little game, my nephew and I, at the pool. The game we play is I swim up underneath him, I pick him up, and I throw him. It is more my game, but he's cool with it. <laughs> and it was uh, way too crowded at the pool, way too crowded to be doing this. And I ended up throwing the wrong kid. <laughs> yeah, that is a true story. Yeah, I don't know if any of you have ever thrown a child that you don't know. <laughs> Probably not. No, maybe you. I oh, thank you, buddy. It's me. <laughs> But here's what happens when you do do it. You feel like such a horrible person. You feel the most shame. And the only reason why I knew the kid I tossed wasn't my nephew is because he was smaller, so he just went farther than I anticipated. Like, that little dude almost hit a ladder. He was fine. The kid was safe. The kid was safe. And I'm adult enough to realize that uh, I should go home. <laughs> My day is over here. I should go before I turn into Lenny from Mice and Men. There's no rabbits there. So thank you for reliving this with me. The kid was okay. The kid was alright. And uh, so I went, I went back to my sister's place. And I get back there, and she's just standing on the porch, like pacing. And she goes, Oh my God, were you at the swimming pool? They go, Yeah. She goes, while you were there, did you see anything weird? I'm like, what? No, no. What are you talking about? She goes, my Frank Carroll called, said some lunatic showed up and started throwing kids around. Like, but now I saw that dude. It's cool. I talked to him. He's never going to have kids. It's all right. That's like a weird moment. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if I should have kids. Like, I don't, uh, no. <laughs> well, here's some. Um, this is what I like. My other sister, when she was pregnant, just to mess with her, I was like, uh, I, I sent her this article. It said the average cost of having a kid in America today is thirty-five dollars a day. Thirty-five a day. That's yeah. That's expensive, right? That's like waking up every morning and seeing a parking ticket. <laughs> That's what that is, and I don't know, I, I am irresponsible. I think I'd be better off with the parking tickets. Right? Like a parking ticket, I don't have to like take it to soccer practice or teach it to read. Look, what happened to all those commercials that used to be on television where you can like sponsor a kid for two dollars a day? Like where, where, no, I'm serious. We are American, we outsource things. Maybe that is my best option. And I'm not a jerk. $150 a week. That's what I would do. My kid would be the most popular dude in Bangladesh. He would live an amazing life. He could adopt his five best friends. And then we would both look awesome. Because people are like, hey, how's your child doing? I'm like, oh, he's overseas adopting another kid. I'm like, well, that is amazing. How old is he? He's three. We're very progressive. Uh, all right, I'm going to tell you another story. I am poor. I am poor. Yeah, that's what happens with poor So I don't, a lot of times, like, she's out. She's like, I don't talk to poor dudes. I don't know. I'm out of here. I don't blame you. But sometimes, like, doing, because uh, we have some other comedian shows, sometimes doing shows in the city, you'll get, like, free tickets to things. And I always do it, because, like, it's in New York City. Let's experience it. And that. So I got a free ticket to Madame Tussauds at Celebrity Wax Museum in Township. Have you been? Alright. Here's what goes on. This is here's what goes on. I went last this is last summer. Uh, I went there because I had a free ticket. The first section there, if you've ever been, is historical figures. 
That is the first section. And before you went, I have a tour guide to pump you up, to get you excited. She goes, uh, are you guys ready to have some fun? And everyone's like, yeah, 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 all right, cool. Let's have some fun. <laughs> and then you walk in, and the first statue is Hitler. <laughs> yeah. But at least they recognize he's an evil guy because they have him in the corner by himself. <laughs> so apparently they put him in a wax timeout. <laughs> like, let him think about his stuff before he joins the other statues. <laughs> so they got him there in the corner, then there's about 10 feet of nothing. The next closest statue to him is Rosa Parks. <laughs> Yes, next to Rosa is Benjamin Franklin and Barack Obama. They're all over here in the good person area. <laughs> but the thing is, if, if anyone's ever been there, like, you know, it's a tourist trap, so it's a bunch of tourists. So obviously, they just walked in, they want a quick picture with a statue. So everyone wants a picture with Obama or Clinton. But here's the thing, it's way too congested over there to get an uninterrupted photograph. <laughs> so your only option for one of those wow. is then Hitler. <laughs> which you can Google image it. There's actually people standing next to him like, yeah, it's me and this dude. Oh, Times Square is crazy. <laughs> Really weird. And by the way, you can Google limit it, and like seven out of ten pictures will be someone with a wax Hitler. But I've been doing this joke for a year now, so three of them will be a picture of me, my face. <laughs> I'm sure, my parents are happy. If <laughs> you Google anything Hitler, my face shows up. But that's not a boy. It's a joke in the big city. <laughs> so here's so here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do to stop this, because I get it. If you're going to have Hitler, someone's got to go next to him. And I understand Rosa Parks is a rough transition. But someone's got to go there if you're going to have him. So I think next to Hitler, that's where you put Mel Gibson. <laughs> yes, now hear me out. Hear me out. Then next to Mel, then you could put Danny Glover. <laughs> And then you could put Rosa Parks like that. That is the only way to transition from Hitler to Rosa is if you put the Lethal Weapon duo in the middle of that. And screw you guys because none of you would be offended if we walked in there. We would be drawn to those four statues immediately. We'd all be like, "What the hell is going on over here? Is this the new A Team?" <laughs> And then if you did that, you could put them in a van like they're about to solve a mission. <laughs> but if you put them in a van, you have to put Rosa Parks in the front seat. <laughs> <laughs> That's your mom, yeah, man. All right. Uh, I like you guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, last joke. I'll get out of here. Um, this is fun, though. Thanks for having me. Seriously, it's cool. Right. Ray DeVito. Follow me on Twitter or... Uh, Facebook, whatever. Uh, oh, I do videos for uh, AOLsAsylum.com. And uh, right, here, I won't end with a joke I did, because uh, February they had presents. It's presents. It's a way to do a presents video. And this is something I did not know, so I'm going <coughs> to share this information with you. Did you guys know this? The only president we've had that lived in poverty after he was president was John Tyler. John Tyler. He was number 10. He was number 10, which I think... He was a farmer, and I guess he had some bad years with crops or something. I don't know. I wasn't alive back then, but he was in poverty, which I think would really have to mess with you if you were him, because he was number 10, meaning he probably knew some founding fathers. So to be scrounging for money, and then you finally find some, and then to like look at it, you just see faces of your more successful co-workers. <laughs> Like, Alexander Hamilton, you weren't even a president, man. Like, Timmy Canoe. All right, I'll, I'll leave it on that. All right, right here.